Empathy is the fuel of democracy. Our willingness to see each other, not as enemies, as neighbors, even when we disagree, to understand what the other is going through. Democracy must be defended at all costs, for democracy makes all this possible. Democracy, that's the soul of America. And I believe it's a soul worth fighting for. And so do you, a soul worth dying for. President Biden, yesterday, a beautiful shot of the White House this morning. That was the president speaking at Arlington National Cemetery for Memorial Day yesterday. It's good to have you all on board this morning. Good morning and welcome to Morning Joe. It is Tuesday, June 1st. Along with Joe, Willie and me, we have MSNBC contributor Mike Barnacle, member of the New York Times editorial board, Mara Gay, and White House reporter for the Associated Press, John Lemire. Uh, doing double duty this morning. Well, Staying it way is too early. So a couple of things. First of all, it's it's June. <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh my God. Where did, what, I'm sorry. <laughs> when did that happen? I thought we were like middle of February. No. Um, I really I need to read the paper <laughs> a little bit more. And look on. So let's Check get, the calendar. Let, let's look on sad. Like this is an, it's incredible. Like you know. Look at this Here shot, we are, Mika, of course, where we are all the time at the top of our uh, apartment uh, building at 30 Rock. Uh, uh, never left New York. Yeah. Uh, but I'm yeah, that look tomorrow. at that on set, and we'll we'll see you there. I think some at some point. How was uh, but Memorial Day, uh, Willie? How was your Memorial Day? What did you do? Coffee. Well, I, unfortunately, I spent most of it watching the Yankees be swept by the lowly Detroit Tigers and plummet to five and a half games back in the ALE. So it was a cold, rainy. Uh, Memorial Day here in the New York area for many reasons, but I'm excited. I'm lifted up today by being around the table by these two guys. It's been a year and a half almost yes. since we've had a group this big around the table, so things are coming back. All right, we're yeah, coming. And, 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 That's it. and I think tomorrow it's going to be like Mardi Gras. We're going to be around the table. <laughs> yes. We're going to have, uh, yeah, yes. we're throwing beats. It's going to be fantastic. Mike, how was your Memorial Day weekend? What did you do? You know, it was wet, it was cold, but it was wonderful because Memorial Day is one of my favorite days of the year. It harkens back to, brings back so many memories of growing up when Memorial Day was a much bigger day in the sense of memory than it is today, but it was mm -hmm. wonderful. It was wonderful to be with the grandchildren, my kids, we were all together. Can't ask for anything much more than that. Yeah. No yeah. way. Yeah, Jonathan Lemire. Uh, I spent it in the Cradle of Liberty, Wilmington, Delaware, uh, on presidential <laughs> presidential pool duty, uh, where it also was cold and rainy like everything else. But I will say, to furthering Mike's point, uh, the president on Sunday addressed uh, in front of the group of Delaware veterans um, not just the sacrifice that they and their families made for those lost in service, but he made it very he made it deeply personal and spoke about his yeah. son Bo, who himself was a veteran who had died six years ago. Uh, that day. And certainly this president uh, understands what Memorial Day is all about and the sacrifice that American families uh, have made. Well, you know, and Bo told him, Bo told us when he came on the set, uh, whenever we talked to him, it was obvious his, his military service and the friends uh, that uh, and, and colleagues that he knew and 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 lost in the wars. That that was that was he felt like that was the most important thing he did in his life. So obviously it's very personal to the Bidens, just like it is for so many so many families. Mara, uh, also is we're we're watching Joe Biden yesterday. It's so it's so interesting that if I'd heard any president talking about democracy and we need to fight for it five six years ago, I would have said, okay, that's great. But we're we like we assumed that's the reality in America for over you know a, 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 why is he talking about almost democracy taking offense uh, why is he talking about democracy and it just really it's just another sharp reminder of where we are in 2021 that there are illiberal so-called democracies uh, across Central and Eastern Europe. There is a growing totalitarianism across the globe and a growing number of Americans who are saying that they want the election results overturned and they'll even resort to violence, if you believe the polls, uh, to achieve those ends. That's right. The president is talking about democracy because democracy is under threat at home and abroad. Uh, it was even more meaningful when you think that 
We spent the past four years having a president who I think if we remember, wasn't that long ago, I, I don't want to uh, misquote him, but I think at some point he called uh, veterans losers. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, I think there are, there are millions of Americans for whom yesterday was, was a very solemn day and a reminder that uh, democracy is, and freedom are, are really truly not free. It's not trite if you've lost someone uh, in war or, uh, you know, if you were out marching for civil rights in the 60s or for voting rights last year or this year. Look yeah. at what's happening in Texas. Um, you know, this was an emotional day for my family as well. My uncle Donovan died in 2013 of an Asian orange related cancer that he got in Vietnam, right? Wow. And so mm. uh, millions of families have sacrificed to build this democracy and to, to hopefully expand it. I think a majority of Americans who voted for, for Joe Biden want to see this democracy endure and expand to uh, be better and to include all, all of us. Um, and there yeah, are illiberal yeah. forces, as you said, Joe, that, that don't want that. Yeah, and, and it's so, uh, well, we're so sorry for your family, but the, it's a reminder there are so many families uh, that, uh, that we're remembering yesterday, and, and not just for those who died in battle, but for those who died uh, from the effects of battle. <clears throat> and we've certainly seen it over the past decade, the past 20 years, the number of young Americans committing suicide uh, that, that served our country in uniform. And it's, it's just, again, it's something that bears, uh, bears repeating uh, every day about those remarkable sacrifices. Willie, uh, speaking of trite, and, and I, 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 I hate to bring this up, I really do, but <clears throat> speaking of trite, uh, you look at the trite attacks at the vice president, uh, on on Friday, you want to uh, uh, go after somebody because of policy? That's something. But to use Memorial Day because she tweeted, "Have a nice long weekend. Memorial weekend" or whatever. By the way, yesterday was Memorial Day. Let me just educate everybody out there. Just I I know some of you are new at this. <laughs> some of you maybe have forgotten what it's like to be Americans. Uh, yeah, I know the last four or five years have been sort of. Uh, destabilizing <laughs> for you. I didn't say that. Destabilizing for you. Memorial Day was yesterday. Memorial Day weekends over the weekend. And Willie, what was so remarkable about, uh, more remarkably trite and small about uh, the fake outrage that that was aimed at Kamala Harris on Friday for a tweet was you just. I think George Conway said, "Oh, you want to go there? You really want to go there?" You want to you, you, you want to look at Donald Trump's tweets on Memorial Day about his economy and how great everything's going, et cetera, et cetera, like nothing to do with sacrifice. A guy who for four and a half years had absolutely no idea how to connect with those who have sacrificed for this country. Uh, it made what happened on Friday uh, all, all sort of the more trite, uh, the more sad that people were that desperate to attack on this weekend. Yeah, and as you say, Donald Trump, who many of them probably support if they're attacking Kamala Harris that way, uh, put out a message talking about gas prices uh, for Memorial Day weekend and remember how great your president, Donald Trump, was and that the uptick in prices right. has taken place because of Joe Biden had turned into an attack on the sitting president. So enjoy the long weekend from Kamala Harris. Uh, obviously, there's some hypocrisy going on there. On a day yesterday, especially, Joe, I mean, there are so many families out there. If you think about, for example, the Vietnam Veterans Wall, uh, my dad fought in Vietnam. He had an experience with Agent Orange that affected his life and still affects it today. Uh, Mike, there are 58,318 names on that wall alone. And when you stand and look at that wall, you can't help but think of the lost potential, the lost futures. Um, I feel that when I look at it, I think about my dad. And if obviously if he were on that wall, there's no me. There's no my kids aren't around. Um, so there's such a depth to a lot of families in this country for what Memorial Day means. You know, Willie, first of all, the wall is overwhelming, just by itself, overwhelming, uh, to look at all the names and to be there and see people finger tracing the names of loved ones lost or friendships ended in Vietnam, uh, and the Agent Orange effect on people still today that was mentioned by Mara. And uh, I'm sure it affected your dad. Yep. 
Uh, I know several people who are deeply affected. But yesterday, the importance of President Biden's speech, I think, was a critical component to Memorial Day. The idea of giving a speech on de about democracy, sort of defining what democracy meant to him and to us, has long been on his mind, Jonathan, long been on his mind. And he gave it yesterday <clears throat> on the perfect day to give it, especially given the confluence of events around us, the Texas legislature, the whole flap about voting. And I think if you speak to people, and I know you do in the White House, uh, the idea that the Republicans in the United States Senate, he's sort of ignoring the House to a certain extent, but the Republicans in the United States Senate, Jonathan, are such a monolithic block, has surprised him. Yeah, no question. And defending democracy has been a, a theme of his, starting with the campaign when he was running against Donald Trump, uh, but also taking office. And he's really, he set the stakes very high, basically saying that America needs to prove that democracy can still work at home in order to be a rival uh, to compete with the autocracies abroad, particularly China, that he feels like we need to prove that this still works, that the American experiment with democracy still works. And certainly part of that message is to the Republican Party and suggesting that democracy means voting. Democracy means what should be, you know, not an insurrection, and therefore in commission to investigate it, which of course we saw go down in defeat uh, on Friday. And there is, there has been real surprise and dismay from the president and his advisors. Sure, there have been a couple of Republicans they feel like they can deal with on these issues, um, whether it's infrastructure, but certainly on the bigger picture stuff. But it's a, it's a, a block that has been incredibly stubborn and difficult to penetrate. And the president knows the stakes are high and the Republicans, he believes, need to get on board.